this clip we're going to summarize the features that are seen and the geologic processes that occur at divergent plate boundaries. And we're going to use the example of an oceanic ridge. All the oceanic ridges on Earth are divergent plate boundaries. And before we get started here, I um, want to let you know we're going to draw a diagram. And drawing a diagram is a really good way for you to practice or review the material. Instead of just looking over notes and looking at words, I think that a lot of times you can get the information to stay in your mind better if you draw a diagram. So I'll show you how to draw one. We're going to start by drawing the sea surface. Since oceanic ridges are under the ocean, on the ocean floor, we're going to draw the ocean surface up here. So these are some waves on the ocean surface. And then we're going to draw the sea floor rising up to the top of the ridge. And there's a lithospheric plate on this side, it's oceanic lithosphere, and then there's another one over here on the other side of the ridge, on the, uh, over here on the right hand side, we'll draw this other plate, sloping down off that oceanic ridge. So we could label these, uh, they're oceanic plates, they're plates that are on the seafloor. Another one over here, We'll draw arrows showing that the plates are moving away from each other. That's the definition of a divergent boundary. The plates move away from each other. Now, at the divergent boundaries, a lot of the action is driven by heat from Earth's interior um, that's moving upward toward the surface in the form of hot rock that's convecting upward. So, you know, we'll just kind of show an arrow here, label it hot rock, <laughs> convecting upward down in the asthenosphere. Remember the uh, plates are lithosphere, and underneath the lithosphere there's asthenosphere. See, as you construct the diagram and label it, you could go over the terms, right? You could, you know, say the asthenosphere. Okay, I remember that's the zone of weak rock within the mantle. And because the rock is weak, it is more capable of flow. So we get some hot rock flowing upward here in the asthenosphere or moving upward. And above it is lithosphere. That's the rigid outermost shell of Earth and broken into a bunch of plates. So. Okay, now we're going to uh, show what's happening on the ridge. And one of the things that happens is the heat from the hot rock moving upward it heats up the lithosphere up above. And what that heating is going to do to that rigid rock is it's going to make it start to kind of swell up and you get that higher ridge. But it also makes the lithosphere stretch. It kind of gets stretched out and thinned. And in that stretching and thinning, you get a lot of fractures. So that's what we're trying to show here, fractures. Could even show, um, maybe a little more dramatically, you can fix your diagram easier than I can, but how the plates are thinner right over the ridge and they're a little bit thicker off the ridge. Anyway, gravity is always working to pull rocks downward. So what happens in this uh, stretched and thin lithosphere on the ridge here, it's all fractured. And gravity is going to pull down on the rocks along those fractures. And some of them are going to shift and drop down. So there's a block of rock in the middle. It's dropped downward, forms a low spot. And it's if you looked at it from up above, it would be an elongate low area or valley, and uh, that's commonly called a rift valley. Whenever the rocks shift along a fracture, then we stop calling the crack a fracture, and we call it a fault. And an earthquake happens. Whenever you get movement of rock along a fault, that generates an earthquake. So I'm trying to show little X's in here, where the X's represent shallow, or 
earthquakes. The thinning of the rock here along the ridge, that actually helps the asthenosphere rock, which is already plenty hot, but it's still practically all rock. But we'll talk in the igneous rock module about how the thinning of the rock up here helps promote partial melting in the asthenosphere. And that partial melting is going to result in blobs of liquid rock or magma forming in the asthenosphere and those uh, magma bodies they're going to rise upward. The liquid or molten magma it's less dense than the surrounding solid rock of the asthenosphere and the less dense magma sort of floats in a way upward and it can work its way toward the surface. Some of it will actually come out onto the sea floor. Come out along these fractures up here on the sea floor. Whenever you have magma coming to the surface, even if it's the surface under the ocean, that's volcanic activity. So you can probably sketch yourself a much nicer looking diagram than what I've drawn here. And the textbooks usually have very nice looking ones. But I think we've shown all the key features and processes that happen at divergent boundaries. You get heating from below due to the hot rock convecting upward. That results in stretching and thinning of the lithosphere up above. That stretched out lithosphere gets all fractured. You have earthquakes occurring. Uh, and with those earthquakes, rocks will drop down uh, along the faults and form these rift valleys on the surface, so that's a very common surface feature that you see associated with divergent boundaries. And the volcanic activity is another thing that's commonly seen at divergent boundaries, and that stems, of course, from the magma down below that forms from partial melting of the asthenosphere. Okay, so practice that one on your own when you get a chance. And if you have any questions, you can always ask in class.